Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be doing an action figure review today and we're going to be taking a look at the new Black Series Archive Wave Tusken Raider. Now it is the same Tusken Raider, uh, the same build from the, the previous uh, carded version. Um, I think it was the kind of 40th anniversary version of the, uh, the fourth movie, The New Hope. Um, and uh, in that respect it's not new but obviously um, it's the first time a lot of them have been back in circulation um, and of course when something gets um, released whether it's um, a re-release or something you know completely new um, we're gonna want to get our hands on it and, and take a look at it so without further ado uh, let's jump into it subscribe and leave a like if you enjoy this content and this video uh, and uh, There'll be more to come. So, first of all, what are we going to get in the pack? Now, the Tuscan Raider comes with a lot of accessories. Actually, um, he comes with his uh, iconic, um, awesome-looking um, kind of looks like a bolt-action kind of sniper, but it is, you know, it is technically like a blaster, um, but it is more of like an actual uh, bolt-action weapon. It's the sort of thing that you would actually. Um, assume that just you know carries actual kind of um, bullets rather than you know it's powered um, and kind of like um, the Mandalorian um, rifle you know when he puts the kind of um, uh, incinerator rounds in um, I would imagine it's that type of rifle um, a lot of detail on this I like that they've got the different colors of the silvers the the gray scope the little details in here um, really fantastic detail I mean you know black in there as well and the browns obviously of the wood they've even got if you can kind of see it I don't know if you can on um, there in focus um, you can kind of see the grain of the wood which is awesome I mean that is this is the most detailed uh, weapon I've ever seen uh, in the Black Series line so that is fantastic you're also going to get um, uh, th this piece here. Now, this is a strange one. Um, if you've watched uh, uh, videos concerning um, the kind of uh, the making of the films and the origins of the characters and the design, you'll know that this um, this kind of piece, this staff piece, um, uh, is actually based off something in real life. It's from an African um, tribal um, piece, I believe. There's um, there's something at the Obi Wan Ranch that you know. There's, there's a video, uh, you know, doing a tour on it, and um, the curator there he talks about um, the fact that this is actually uh, a piece of um, African um, tribal kind of history, um, and then they used it in the film and gave it to the Tuscan Raiders. So that's a really interesting one because although it is, um, you know, it is a design, it is something that is um, made out of thin air for the par you know the purpose of Star Wars it is based on something real um, and to a degree it already existed but because it's quite a um, you know a unique piece it just fits into the Star Wars universe um, and as you can see there you know it kind of looks like an acorn with a real sharp point on the end of a staff that is kind of you know you can imagine it's kind of used to like crack skulls open or whatever um, you know, obviously we saw in the Mandalor Mandalorian TV series Boba Fett using one to like absolutely just <laughs> demolish the stormtroopers. Um, and it does come with these free attachments and they just click into the bottom here. So what we'll do is we'll talk about the attachments first and then we'll, we'll look at how they attach. Basically, it's these three pieces. Now, they're just uh, interchangeable pieces, basically. It's just whatever design you want to go with. And I think what the idea is, is that... Um, Basically, you know, if you look at the different films like the prequels um, and the original uh, trilogy um, and all the other references of Tusken Raiders, like in um, like in the new Mandalorian TV series, um, I think they've been depicted with different um, attach, you know, different attachments. Not that they detach, but they've been de depicted differently, um, or you know, they have different tools for different things. So I think that's what we've we've got here is just an array of those, but. It, Again, that's really cool. It's nice to have um, a selection. And again, kind of like the lightsabers and the hilts in the Black Series, it just clicks into the bottom like so. And again, 
very nice. Um, and again, it's just nice to have um, have a little bit of uh, different pieces to choose from. You know, different looks. It's not that you know I'd be I'd be upset if there was only one attachment, but it's just nice. Um, and because it's such an obscure character, it's nice to have all of those um, accessories with it. Um, obviously, if they kind of now, off the back of the Mandalorian TV series, um, decided to do a deluxe version down the line, you could probably add in, you know, all sorts of things like, um, you know, the crate dragon um, kind of meat or that that massive pearl looking thing. Um, you know, I would love personally. One of the things that um, I would really like to see is a six, um, well, a six inch, twelve scale uh, panther. Um, and if they did a deluxe Bantha and Tuscan Raider with, you know, the, the saddle and stuff like that, that would be just awesome. Um, it's something that I don't know if we're going to see, you know, in the future. It's not completely out of the realm of possibility, but it's one of those things where I'm not really sure um, if, you know, what, what situation is going to grant them pulling the trigger on that. Um, so moving these aside um, so we can move on to the Tuscan Raider himself. So when we take a look at the Tuscan Raider of course you can see straight off the bat he looks incredible. We've got soft goods, um, he's got a cloak kind of cape um, thing going on but in terms of the Tuscan Raider I mean how cool is that? He looks so uh, so kind of steampunky and it's so sick. Um, I'm just so happy to kind of get my hands on, on this. When it was uh, announced to be released it was just one of those things that I, I just had to have one as part of my toy photography because um, they're just so, you know, they're such cool looking characters and they're so versatile in terms of uh, as a background character um, rather than just being, you know, a, just another stormtrooper or just um, whatever. You know, things like Tuscan Raiders and Jawas and stuff, they're underrated because, um, you know, they really uh, kind of make a scene um, way more um, dynamic and, and, and diverse in the sense of it's not just uh, you know a, a rebel versus a, uh, a trooper or a trooper versus a Jedi you know um, and, and with a Tusken Raider you know they are so, again so cool looking um, and uh, again not many in circulation now first of all um, you know in terms of paint application from you know the head it's fantastic. I mean, you can kind of see the wrap around their head, you know, that makes them look like a mummy. That actually is done um, kind of by a mould, but then it's it's painted with this sandy colour and then like also weathered. You can kind of see the detailing in there and the discoloration and the darker um, bits of grime in there, and that is fantastic. The mouthpiece paint application is very good on that. The you know the silver kind of metal studded looking pieces and the eye pieces. Again, fantastic. The rebreather kind of thing, amazing. Um, the the chest, uh, the chest kind of bandolier sort of looking thing. Again, absolutely fantastic. The ammo pouches with the little gold studded bits. The brown leather pouches with like the weathering. You can kind of see. Um, it's just incredible. Like they've really done well. Even the sculpted. Um, kind of um, cloth looking uh, garments that they wear have texture to them um, and they are just absolutely great if you look at the arms up under the uh, under the cloth they're weathered as well um, with that kind of black wash just like the head and that is just amazing again like it really surprised me honestly and on the feet um, you know on the boots if I can get this in focus for you on the boots again you know look like those kind of like mummy feet <laughs> um, but yeah like absolutely fantastic like so in terms of paint application you'd think that this would be like a real simple one maybe or um, you know nothing to nothing to jump up and down about but honestly as paint application goes I think this is like the best paint application on a figure I've seen of virtually any of the figures in the Black Series line um, just because of the kind of complicated steampunk look and they've nailed it, they've gone the extra mile on it, they haven't cut corners just to give you another character, it's not a money grab um, it is a very detailed figure. Now so in terms of the look 
um, and the paint applications on the look. The design is awesome. I mean, uh, Tuscan Raiders look cool um, either way. Um, and, and, and now with the new Mandalorian uh, appearances and way, way more of a look into their culture. Um, I mean, obviously we've had looks in comic books and stuff like that, but way more of a look into their culture. Um, you know, they're a more prominent character. Where this figure kind of struggles, though, when we move on to articulation, is the fact that um, he's a very rigid character. Now, luckily, in the TV series, you know, The Mandalorian um, and the films, um, bar maybe the prequels where um, Anakin, um, you know, kind of just decimates the village and you see them running around and stuff like that and sitting and all that sort of stuff, um, and then kind of trying to get in... in trying to get into the action but they all all obviously get slaughtered we've never really seen them be dynamic we've seen them with their arms above their head or shooting and stuff like that but nothing too acrobatic but I mean with him uh, unfortunately for example like his head like barely moves like it will look around but it like actually barely moves we'll we'll get onto that but um, that's kind of a shame there in terms of like the arms and the feet you know they're they're okay um but he, again, he's not going to get into uh, real dynamic poses. Now, one of the things I would mention straight off the bat is this um, kind of cloak is soft goods, and that is fantastic. I love to see that. Um, and when you get it out of the box, it's actually tucked up underneath. So I thought, oh, it's you know, it's shape, you know, sized to this point. When you pull it out, um, which obviously you don't have to do you can tuck it in as part of the look but when you pull it out to see more of the kind of the tunic looking thing you know it's very very long uh, which is nice and it's flowy it, it isn't um, isn't perfect and, and you know you wouldn't want it to be and I like that it's kind of frayed on the edges um, so that's really cool however what's really interesting that I kind of didn't think about um, is that the fact that it's actually connected to the arms it's not separate like a Jedi cloak it's connected so when you lift his arms up um, you know that's it in there and his arm in the sleeve but the sleeve as you can see here is kind of like stitched get that in focus for you um, so yeah he kind of has like a <laughs> when he puts his arms up kind of has like a wingsuit um, but that's okay I mean that's cool I mean and as well looking at kind of again with the you know the the tunic um, look at the weathering on that that's not aftermarket stuff that's done by Hasbro and, and you know Black Series have absolutely nailed this um, you know I mean as Black Series figures go you don't typically get uh, weathering to enhance it um, and that's an aftermarket thing a lot of people do um, to try and just kind of uh, upgrade their figure but the fact that it's got so much on there is fantastic in terms of articulation at the, at the feet he's got decent toe point um, really good toe point actually like it's it's fluent it's not you don't have to fight it really good toe point uh, toe point to the sky um, and obviously he has the ankle kind of pivot looks like I've completely snapped his ankle there but um, yeah so really good articulation on the ankles now the tunic is strategically split completely up the side which is nice but it overlaps so it hides that um, but under here he's got kind of you know normal legs um, he does have double jointed knees I'm not going to completely bend them back because uh, of the cape but you can kind of see um, the the joint here the joint here but that's double jointed so that's really good it's not really useful in the fact that the tunic's quite long but it's nice that you have the capabilities because it means that um, if you want to you can utilize that at the hips um, he's really quite stiff even to rotate like I'm really giving it some some uh, juice there and it's not wiggling too much as ab crunch goes you know got a little bit of a bend backwards which is well, I say a little bit you know I should probably be more generous that's quite a good bend back and in terms of forward again that's quite a good bend um, so it's actually deceptively good and again I think it's because kind of the legs will move but you don't kind of see it happen so it's deceptive um, at the arms he'll kind of he'll get to 90 with a bicep curl get that in focus for you. Um, he'll get to uh, a t-pose at 90 there but obviously he will um, swivel 
looking uh, looking like that so that you can get the arm up above his head um, it's good like if you're doing a shot with him um, doing the rifle above the head you know the famous scene that was looped in the original um, A New Hope um, again you can take you can take this off uh, and kind of do it like this and to a degree um, you know some shots you might need to um, but obviously he's so iconic with the the soft goods kind of um, cloak that you want to keep it on if you can um, it does allow you movement so it's not too bad um, but uh, in terms of articulation with the arms not too much now with the head again like we said absolutely nothing side to side that's what you get absolutely nothing backwards uh, absolutely nothing forward so he will spin uh, and he will go 360 um, so that's good at least you can look to the side but he is a little bit of an awkward one in terms of giving you eye contact and um, depending on where you're looking but um, again uh, not not too bad when you consider the look of the figure is awesome and this is the type of character that typically isn't going to be um, a main character and if and if they are um, they're typically going to be in just a you know a conversational pose or a um, a pose you know holding a weapon chanting or something and and still they aren't going to be uh, uh, needing that much articulation in the head um, and to be honest there's a lot of articulation in the body that's deceptive so that kind of makes up for it and if you kind of again like I say leaning back you get that kind of look up um, in terms of versatility he's not the most vertile, uh, versatile of characters uh, sure because you know he's kind of limited to a desert planet but um, in terms of versatility with you know um, Mandalorian shots uh, and Tatooine um, and if you're doing anything to do with A New Hope um, all those sandy planets um, or anything kind of to do with you know like a market or anything like you know kind of the diorama the Tatooine diorama um, uh, market we've got here uh, he's gonna he's gonna fit right in um, so uh, you know a, a great piece to pick up um, and I got a couple um, and I'm definitely going to uh, utilize those as background characters and um, also you know interactions with Mando and that sort of stuff uh, or with Luke and, and Obi-Wan that sort of stuff and Jawas so you know there's there is possibilities there it's not fantastic it's not you know amazing but it's there um, in terms of an overall uh, score probably give this character um, probably give him a six uh, kind of like the Thai pilot uh, it's just quite a specific character so like although it has its uh, its big points um, you know that kind of uh, put it up there it does have its drawbacks um, to be honest I would probably actually bump it to a seven um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in a seven just because the weathering and stuff like that just looks so good um, and the the figure looks so good that the articulation is okay um, and the fact that he's not the most versatile character um, is probably the the bit that drags him down just that that little bit um, but yeah a solid seven um, you know and now I think of it um, you know he he, he is a, a deceptively good figure um, once you really get in there uh, and have a look at what's going on um, so I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope it was informative there's plenty more videos to come on the channel um, action figure reviews, diorama builds, other creative projects um, soon uh, just like a, uh, a walkthrough of this uh, Tatooine um, market diorama build um, uh, so do stay tuned for that, subscribe um, not to miss any content so take care guys and I'm going to see you in the next one